Lightroom Classic is loaded with advanced color techniques and different workflows if you know where to look for them and how to use them. In this video, that's what we're gonna be covering. My name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. I'm excited that you guys are here for today's video where I'm gonna cover advanced color techniques in Lightroom Classic. Now, if you're using Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw has some very similar um, techniques that you can use, and regular Lightroom does as well, but this is going to be shown in Lightroom Classic. Um, that's just the most common software that my followers are using, so that's how I'm going to show it to you today. Now these are going to be outside of most of the basic tips you see. I'm going to do a little bit of explaining on point color, um, explaining how to adjust colors with the masking tool um, to make more refined adjustments and all that good stuff. So we're going to talk about uh, mostly a lot of um, refining your color adjustments and your color selections and how you can use that to really improve your images in some real world examples that I'm going to show you of my landscape photography. This is going to be good for all kinds of photography, but for landscape photographers, specifically, you're really going to find use out of a lot of these tools where we want to maybe adjust the colors slightly. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. Um, the first image that we're looking at is this image. Now, if you are a landscape photographer like me, you've for sure been out in a time like this before where maybe the color of the tree wasn't quite perfect for fall color. You can see if I zoom in here, the tree is a little bit green. We want it to be just a little bit more yellow. Now, the problem that we're going to have, typically most people We'll go down to their color mixer or uh, HSL sliders. They would go to hue and they would grab the green and they would adjust it towards yellow. It's not doing much. Maybe we need to adjust the yellows towards orange, just like that. And that looks all right, but it doesn't really look realistic um, because you kind of are doling out the colors. Uh, and you're also creating everything the same exact shade, which doesn't create that flattering of an image in my opinion. So there's a little bit better way to do that, and that is in using this point color. Now, if you know how to use point color, stick around because I'm going to show you some advanced things here in point color and making selections. Um, and that's really going to be what a lot of this video is kind of devoted to is this point color. Um, so how you use the point color is you are allowed to um, click on the eyedropper and select uh, or sample from your photo and it will make a swatch, meaning it will basically say whatever color you click on, that color is what's gonna get adjusted and then you will adjust things around that color, meaning other similar colors, not necessarily proximity in the image, but um, on the color wheel proximity. So for this example, we wanna adjust those greens a little bit more towards yellow and those yellows a little bit more towards orange. Let's go after those greens first so I wanna select a good uh, sample of the green. Now I don't wanna get something that's like really dark green like right in here, but I also don't wanna get like the brightest green over here either. I just wanna get something right in the middle, maybe about right in here. We'll select that now. You can see we've created our swatch here. So now when I adjust things, you can see this will adjust uh, the hue, the saturation, or the luminance. But we have the same problem here. When we adjust the hue, we are adjusting way too much when it comes to the greens. We really just want to target those greens. I don't want to grab all of the yellows as well. You can see we're targeting here. Now you do have the option by default, yours will probably look like this. You can visualize range if you want to see the colors. This is sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, know that it's there, we'll use it right now, but we might not use it later. Um, so I can see every color that I can see in the scene right now is being selected. Any adjustment that I make will adjust anything that has color in the image right now. You can see just like that. Now, if I want to make that range a little bit more restrictive, because right now I'm selecting um, everything in this square, basically, is being selected. So you can see we also have a lot of oranges and yellows, a lot of really like bluish greens. We want to reduce the selection. So... If I go ahead and, and drop the range, you can see as I increase or decrease the range, it is increasing or decreasing how much color is getting selected nearby the color that we have, the swatch that we've selected. So in this example, we would want to do less range. And that might give us a little bit better um, selection. You can see it's, it's a little bit better. But let's even go a step further and make this even better. So we'll open this up. Now, we can adjust the range to affect more or less of the hue, saturation, or luminance range. 
So as I adjust this, it's just basically moving them all equally, but we can go in and make a little bit more precise selection by using hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, and remember, this isn't affecting the look of the image. This is just affecting the selection. These sliders up here will affect the look of the image, which is what we're going to do after we fine tune the selection. Now, remember in our selection here, we don't want to select all those yellows and oranges. We just want to select the greens. So we will actually slide this bar all the way over and slide this over. So now we're just selecting those greens. Now you can see as we adjust this hue, look how much we can cut out from those oranges that we are selecting. That is good. Now, um, we can adjust the luminance if we want. I'll probably just open it up because I want to make a selection of all of the colors that are in that shade. So I will open it up. Um, and the way that this works is this little bar here, anything in between the lines of the bar is 100% selected. Anything outside of the lines is going to be partially selected, not totally selected. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry too much. Just know that you need to keep these two bars as small as possible. I'll open up the saturation range as well. Now we're going to uncheck visualize, visualize range. That's a tough one to say. Where you're going to close that down. Now we're going to adjust the hue. Now you can see we're getting a little bit better adjustments. You can see I'm just grabbing some of those greenish leaves. Now the one problem that we have when we adjust this is now it, we're kind of getting this ugly yellow look. This kind of this throw up color look. So we're going to increase the luminance just to make it pop a little bit more. Maybe just adjust that a little bit. Just like that, we can toggle that. Now you can see our tree is looking a lot better. We can also go in and create an additional swatch here. And we can just select the yellow in the image. Now we can adjust the hue or saturation of the whole tree, kind of back to where we were before. But we have a little bit more control here. So we could make it a little bit more orange. And then I like to pop that luminance as well. Popping the luminance um, is usually going to be a better way to add impact to your image, in my opinion, rather than adjusting saturation. Adjusting the saturation can look a little bit unrealistic, whereas popping that luminance can help the colors pop in your image. So just like that, I'm pretty happy there. Now, the last thing that I want to detail on this image is how to separate the colors a little bit. So if I went to the mixer, I'd have a hard time separating this orange background from this yellow orange tree. But in using the swatches here, it's very easy to do a little bit of color separation, to add some natural contrast in the image. We're going to grab that color just like that, new swatch, and then we can adjust this. Now you can see we're selecting the tree once again. So we may want to go on here, visualize range. And this time we may not need to do all the advanced stuff that we did before. We can just drop the range down. You can see now it's making a lot better selection. Now we can adjust the color. So in this example, I want to push the color of the wall away from the color of the tree. So in this example, I would want to go more red instead of more yellow. We can bring, make a few adjustments here. We don't want to go too far, but just a hair. And we can also go in here. We could open the range and make our hue range. We want to select more of the wall, which is this reddish color, like more of this up here. Um, we just don't want to go any more towards the yellow side. So we could do that as well. Somewhere maybe in here. It's looking pretty good. So really, you can just do this to your heart's desire, whatever you want to do here. But this point color is very powerful, especially when using it with the hue, saturation, and luminance range and the range slider. You can really do a lot with this tool in terms of making your image colors a little bit better. You can see in just a few minutes, I really did a lot with this image. Now, these selections and point color are good, but they're not perfect. There's no way that you can feather the adjustment if it's coming in too strong. Or you've seen maybe you've adjusted the HSL sliders too much, and you'll have like a blue that's getting clipped, and it just looks weird. There's like visual noise. It doesn't look good. Um, and so I'll show you how you can fix that here. So let's say you're in the mixer. Let's say we want to adjust the color of the pool or the luminance since we talked about luminance last time. We'll go in and we'll adjust the blue or we'll adjust the aqua. You can see when I do this though, it gives us this weird like almost painting noise, whatever you want to call it. It looks terrible and there's no way to adjust that. Even if you use point color, there is nothing that we can do. We can increase the range. 
you know, we can adjust the hue, but we're always going to run into the same problem if we really want to push this slider. Sure, we can do just little adjustments, but what if we want to do a big adjustment? Now, this is where your masking tools are going to come in handy. So I'm going to show you that here. Masking tools are located up here. Now, what you're going to do is create a mask based on range, and you're going to do color range. Now, I'm going to select the deep blue here. This shows you what you're creating a mask of. This means um, anything that I select here is going to be adjusted by the adjustments that I'm about to show you. Now, but let's say we wanted more than just that blue. Let's say we wanted that kind of turquoise as well. You don't have to create a new mask. All that you have to do is click here, click Add, and then click Color Range again. Uh, uncheck Show Overlay so you can see the image. And now click on this Aqua. Now it will add the two masks together. You can see that's looking pretty good. You can also go in and adjust the range. Um, so for example, we might show overlay, select color range two, adjust the range. Now we don't want to select everything on the outside, but somewhere about there looks good. We'll go back to color range one, open up the range, and you can see that's looking pretty good. Now if you were worried about all the stuff around the outside, you could click back on mask one, click subtract, and then just subtract with a brush and you could paint this out. Now this works good on this image because there's nothing on the edge that needs to be really finely painted. But if you did have something on the edge, this isn't gonna work quite as well. Now we have this nice mask that we can make adjustments with. So now you can literally do anything, you know, increase the exposure, increase whatever you want. Um, but if I wanted to pop the color here or the uh, lightness, maybe I would adjust Try highlights, maybe try whites. Try a few different things here. Or you could even use your point color tool here um, and open up the range and then make your adjustments. You're going to run into the same problem if you do that, though, um, because we still have the same selections being made. We can't make a wide enough selection with this point color tool. So we're not going to use that. It was worth a shot, um, but you're not going to be able to use it for that. But you can do other things in here. You know, increase your, usually the whites is going to be a good choice. You can see that really pops all the colors without creating all that weird junk around the outside. And I'm all the way at 100 on the whites. So you could do that here. You know, you can make adjustments to your saturation. You can adjust the hue just like that. If you wanted to change the hue of the whole thing, you have a little bit more control here because you can see I can adjust the hue um, literally all the way across the color spectrum. It's not limited like that point color tool where you can only go so far. So that's how you would use a mask to make a color selection in your image. I could do the same thing in this image with the oranges um, or with the browns or whatever I want, but that's going to be what you're going to use when maybe you're finding that the point color tool is a little bit limited in what you can do with the selection. Let's look at one more example here where I want to show you guys how I can kind of make a sunset pop just a little bit using some of these tools. Now, the first thing that I want to do to this photo, the first thing that I'm really noticing is that my blues, I've kind of lost the blues in the image. The sky should be a little bit blue here. So there's a few different ways I can do this. You know, if I go into the mixer, I can increase the blue saturation, but I don't really like how that looks. Um, you know, I could tone the image, make it a little bit bluer, but then that makes the whole image bluer. So instead, I'm just going to use our point color here. I'm going to sample a color. Now, you might think there's not really any color in the sky. How is this going to work? But there still is a little bit of color. And we can increase the saturation. Now, you'll notice, you know, the sky is not really the right color either. Um, and so that's where this tool comes in handy because we'll use the hue and we'll adjust this. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to have the saturation at 100. I'm going to dial this back, but I want it as high as possible when I'm adjusting the hue so I can get the hue to something that I feel like looks accurate. To me, probably right about there is an accurate hue for the sky. Now I will dial the saturation back down to just about right there. Now that looks pretty good to me. I am happy with that. Now the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to be a little bit limited in point color and I'll show you why, is I want to pop these oranges a little bit. So make a selection of the oranges. And then we'll go in here and, you know, we'll bring up the luminance shift. And that is going to pop the lightest spots on our orange color. I like what that's doing up here. It's kind of making this on fire. But down here, I'm not liking what it's doing. You're really limited in this point color because you can't combine this with any kind of masking whatsoever. 
So that's why we'll look to the masking tool once again. Now, um, this time in the masking tool, um, because I do want to use that point color option, but I just want to have a little bit more control, what we're going to do is just hit this to make a AI sky selection. It'll just select the whole sky for me. It does a pretty good job there. Um, and now we will uncheck show overlay. And we are going to go down to point color. We're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to sample that orange. We're going to pop that luminance, maybe even bring up the saturation. Now you're probably thinking we have the same problem as we did before, which is true. But now we have a mask so we can paint this out. So what I'm going to do is do subtract with a brush. Then I'll go in here. You can adjust your brush as you see fit if you want to do a little bit lower flow so it works in a little quicker. You know, you can. And now you're just going to paint this in. And I am painting over this multiple times here. Now we'll hover that. You can see that's the paint that I've applied so far. So now you can see, you know, we're getting, we're painting this out a little bit and you'll see the final effect here. Now I've allowed those clouds to pop without blowing out these highlights in the bottom. So you can see, you can combine this, you know, just about any way that you want. You can combine this point color with a masking tool and that is really going to allow you to have full control over where this is getting masked into. Um, you can also do a completely black mask and then just paint with a brush where you want this to be applied. A lot of different ways that you can do this if you're familiar with masking tools. If you haven't used the masking tools before, you've obviously seen a little bit in this video, but I'll link another video um, where you can find some of that as well. I want to show you one last thing that you can do kind of with the color here that's pretty fun in this masking tool. Um, and on a scene like this, you know, I'm out here in the desert in the southwest. I've got kind of a reddish orange rock, reddish orange sunset, but I want to separate them just a little bit. So let's create a new mask. Let's do select sky again. Then we're going to invert the sky mask. The reason why I'm doing this instead of just creating a foreground selection is because there's, because there's not really a good option for foreground. You could try select subject, but it's not going to create as good of a mask as this did. So now this is looking pretty good. Uncheck show overlay. We're still on mask two. We'll create another point color adjustment of the rock. One thing you'll notice on our point color, um, you know, it says this color is too dark. Uh, it has to be a light enough color to select it. So you can just kind of scroll around and find, you know, like right here on this rock. That would be good. Now you could bring up the luminance if you wanted to brighten everything a little bit. And you could adjust that hue shift to make it a little bit different. You could bring up the saturation. I might want to make this a little bit more orange and maybe not quite that saturated, but something like that. Now that helps to kind of just make it stand out just a little bit from the background. You wouldn't want to overdo this. Um, you do want to do this in moderation here, but being able to do that can kind of help. Again, like I said in that first image, it can give you some uh, color separation in the image, which can be really, really appealing to the eye and add more natural contrast to the scene. So for me personally, these are just some of my favorite ways to do some advanced color adjustments that maybe aren't so obvious from the get-go. Um, but I think doing some of these things will really help you out. If you aren't using that point color tool, you really got to be using it. It is one of the more powerful tools in Lightroom Classic that was added I guess in the last year or so. Um, otherwise, like I said, I'll link a couple videos down below if you're not familiar with masking um, or anything else like that in Lightroom. Make sure to check out the other videos on my channel. And if you are trying to improve the photography, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm doing my best to release a video every single week that is helpful, straight to the point, um, and as concise as can be that helps you to improve your own photography. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so very much for being here. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is Austin James Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time.